Cool. Let's talk about the GWS Giants. They finished seventh uh, with a record of 11, 10, and 1 and a percentage of 99.7% with their exit coming in the semi final. I've got a riddle for you. Hmm? If you play in an elimination final and you lose, you get eliminated. What happens if you lose a semi? The date says goodbye and walks out on you. <laughs> Uh, well played Um, (laughs) anyway GWS so uh, for context going into this season they had made the grand final in 19 and then had a pretty disappointing COVID year in 2020 uh, missing the finals and looking quite listless towards the end of the year so in for context they've kind of gradually improved by getting back into the finals Um, any sort of particular impressions from GWS this year it's sort of like last year, their key guys had down years, so they had a down year. But some of those guys have sort of recouped and refound their form, so that sort of re-led them back up the ladder, I think. Yep. And probably a couple of... The Hogan acquisition worked good for him when he actually played. He yep. looked like a good pace for him. I, uh, I agree. Actually, for added context, this was the year they'd lost probably more plays in a single off-season, certainly in terms of quality, uh, than they had any other year. So Jeremy Cameron's probably yep. the biggest, best player to walk out on the club, I would say. I'd agree with that. Um, and then uh, uh, Zach Williams, big loss. Uh, a- Aiden Core comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else is there? There was someone else half days. Yeah, there, there was there yeah. was six. Caldwell left. Yeah, Jai Caldwell. Oh, but right. you expect them to lose a few of those young kids just because yeah. the way they've drafted. And the Hately quantity. probably counts in that group as well. Yeah. He walked into the preseason draft. Both he and Caldwell were yeah. first round draft picks. Hately was borderline first. I think he was like that pick 19, sort of, I think early second, wasn't he? Or uh, no, I, I, I got a feeling he was closer to like 10 than, than 20. I think he was like 19, I'm pretty sure, off my head. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. But either way, yeah, a, a good He's prospect mark, who, yeah. who showed really good form for Essendon since he got traded. So, uh, anyway, a, a big exodus from GWS, and there was a question mark around how they would stabilise, and they've certainly done that. They actually improved on a year last year, despite losing all those players. Positives, they won a final. I think any time you win a final, particularly against your rival in Sydney, uh, for whom they were massive underdogs as well, that's that's a big plus. I think the midfield dynamic in Kelly, Ward, Taranto and Hopper generally is it's really it's still strong. a good midfield. Yeah, and they're, they're young and they're in their prime as well. So that's good. And, and on top of that, Josh Kelly re-signing with the club, uh, extending his stay there is a massive um, is a massive sign for yeah. what they've got cooking there. And much. plus, no one was probably giving him the money that that contract guaranteed him. That's ever. true. That's true. Yeah, it's North like a Melbourne. million a year or whatever. Yeah, I suppose North Melbourne weren't really in the same position, I guess. I, I yeah. don't know the specifics on what they offered and what they didn't. But uh, the dynamic North has changed from a few years yeah. ago when they were trying to get Gaff and that, for sure. Uh, Green bagging 45 goals in 18 games. That's uh, He was an outstanding player this year. He's generally one of the best yeah. players this year. Um I mentioned that they've improved whilst losing Cameron. They've also unearthed some good young talent in, uh, particularly in the back half with Ash coming and Iden. Gross. Yeah. Um, Lucky Ash in particular, I think, is going to be an absolute jet. So he, he's yeah. one I think they need to keep. He's one that, like, coming sort of probably had the better year of the two, but I think Ash has mm-hmm. the more upside, like, because coming sort of found his consistent sort of spot, whereas I think Ash is sort of still yeah. figuring it out, even though his upside is higher. I agree with that. I probably did undersell coming a little bit there by just talking about Ash, but Isaac coming, he was in my fantasy team yeah. all year, um, coming in my fantasy, and he was uh, really, really good all season. <laughs> this is the worst preview. Coming ever. in your fantasy. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of, Jesse Hogan, that you touched on, yep. um, showed flashes this year. I think like there was a few games there where he looked like he was the player he was at Melbourne, yeah. uh, and then some other, you know, obviously off-field injuries uh, got in the way. So um, for a team that desperately needs a key forward target, Jesse Hogan potentially finding that potential would be a massive win for them. So I th- I put it yeah. as a positive because they showed, you know, he could have come in and looked useless. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it Fremantle came in and p- kicked less goals than games played. So mm-hmm. he's already looking better than that at GWS. That's, that's a positive. They won two out of three derbies. They beat the Premiers at the G. They beat Melbourne. Um, and they beat the Cats at GMHBA as well. So they can genuinely beat the best They've teams. got scalped. Absolutely. And that, that's a really good sign for a team that's sort of on the cusp of contending. Um, and they, on top of that, they did everything that this year whilst being away from home because yeah. <laughs> of the isolation factor. And so for both Sydney teams to play finals this year is a massive testament to both of them. What about some negatives? Well, sort of probably the sea- they did have a bit of a seesawy sort of season. That's true. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they, they, so they beat those teams I mentioned yeah. and they dropped, they've dropped points to Gold Coast. Yeah. And they drew with North Melbourne. Um, admittedly, North Melbourne sort of got their act together around that time. Uh, but yeah, in the scheme of things, when you're pushing yeah. for top six and home finals, you shouldn't be losing as many games to 
bottom teams. You can get away with losing those games that they did win yep. more than you can get away with losing mm. those Gold Coasty type games. You'd probably rather be a team like that who is capable of beating the best teams and then has lapses against the bottom teams because you know that once you tidy up your performances against the bottom teams, that's easier, yeah. uh, then you can actually be a really good team. So I think that's actually a, a strange silver lining for them. Yeah, it's a weird one. Toby Green's suspension is probably one of the yeah. biggest negatives for the year. I think he, I was going to say his brain more than the suspension itself. Yes. He's a fucking head case, really. <laughs> like every year he'll do something stupid like this. Like yep. It gets to a point where as good as he is with the 45 goals in 18 games or whatever, he's still a detriment mm. with some of the shit he does. It's just... Do you remember I that? don't know how the team haven't pulled him aside and said, pull your head out of your ass, mate. Well, he was captain this year, wasn't he? Like, yeah. through periods. So, yeah, it's 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 yeah. a head-scratcher. Um, remember that tweet I posted in the group chat? Somebody put out a tweet saying, you know, Green's hit so many suspended weeks that if he gets suspended for two more weeks, he's... He's close to the lifetime. He, he yeah. could be get a lifetime ban and deregistered. Yeah. See, I'd heard of that rule before, but no one's really talking about it. Yeah. So, other than that tweet, I don't know if it's true. So, let me know. If I, I had that true. thought that he was close. And yeah. Then, yeah. You sent me that tweet after that. I'm like, oh, yeah, must be close. Because I thought it was 17, but I wasn't sure if that's like the local ammos or every. Yeah, I think it's everyone. Or, yeah. yeah. So, if, if I didn't explain that properly for those listening, you can only get suspended a certain amount of weeks across your career before. 17, I believe. Is it 17? I knew it was something around that yeah. before you were deregistered. And what's he like, 13 or 15 or something? Somewhere close. Either way. He's in the teens. That's one suspension for Toby Green. Yeah. So um, that's one to keep an eye on. But mm. again, no one's really talking about it. So it could be a bit of a myth. I wonder what happens with his contract if he got deregistered. I assume it's it'd be probably voided. a clause. Yeah. I I, I'd imagine that. the yeah. contracts with players all have those kind of contingencies around if you get deregistered, you forfeit yeah. your money. I think that's fair. Yeah, fuck it up. <laughs> Uh, injuries generally for the Giants uh, Only four players played every game So yeah. um, they, they copped it hard in that respect So to play a final And uh, win a final rather um, Is a great result when you consider that And then I put missing a key forward presence With Jeremy Cameron They couldn't yeah. quite feel that um, but with now Finn Lason going too that's a Yeah, yeah their goal scoring power um, And then Bobby Hill tried to leave yeah. And Toby Green's out for the next first five games of the next year So they will have a bit to, to play with In the first uh, they'll have a bit of work cut out for them in the first month of the year, but yeah. if they get through that period, they'll be all right. Uh, how would you grade their season? Probably C plus B, that sort of thing, because they still have a lot of good talent to push any team like mm-hmm. they have, and they just sort of haven't done it consistently enough. But they did make finals, they did win, so you can't take it away from them, especially yep. after bouncing back from last year. So probably a B. Yep, I agree with a B. I think yes, they were contenders two years ago. Um, although admittedly only finished one spot higher on the ladder that year than they did this year. <laughs> but yeah, so contenders two years ago, uh, they had a terrible 2020 and it's never going to come on year. They lost heaps of players, star players, star players. They had injuries and they're isolated all year. For them to win a final, yeah. that's a really good result. I don't think it's an A, but I think it's a B. Maybe even a B plus with some of those the isolation factor and all that actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll give them the B plus because of all that. Fair enough. Okay, uh, in terms of their off-season, they've got picks 2, 13, 53, and 71. So they lost Finn Lason. They ended up keeping Bobby Hill. That would have been a pretty a bit of a blow if they'd lost Bobby Hill and then Toby Green misses five weeks. Uh, and they couldn't land Hob, but, uh, sorry, Lob, but they, <laughs> um, they that was another one where it's a contracted player and it's just both yeah. parties couldn't meet in the middle. So. And Freo is one of the few teams that actually valued Lob at what he's getting paid. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Are they a smoky for next year? Certainly, like every year they're sort of a smoke with that amount of top end talent they've brought in through their drafts like the past seven, eight years mm. with that much talent lying around, you're always a shot. Yeah, like I said, on the basis that uh, a, you just rate, I rate their best 22. Yes, they lack a big key forward, but if Hogan kicks 45 goals, yeah. which he's capable of, then that's, that's different. Um, and the fact that they can beat good teams on their mm. day, that, I think that's what makes me a little bit wary of GWS. So yeah, great year for them, sort of. 